We're so happy to have everyone with us this morning. God's good, isn't he? And uh, seeing smiling faces, and I love the fellowship before service, all the shaking of hands and hugs, and, uh, and uh, just getting to see everybody uh, every week is a blessing to me. Happy to have uh, some visitors with us today, and uh, 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 that's a, always a blessing. Bill and Sherry are way in with us, and I just, uh, that's Michelle's dad, and, and um, uh, and the mother in, uh, mother-in-law and stepmother-in-law, and uh, we're just so happy to have them with us. And I just found out today they're moving up here in January, so they're going to be with us a lot. So we're happy about that. Good to have Logan and Kelly with us too, and little Carson, and uh, thank God for them to be with us this morning. Got to know them a little bit better last night. We had some fellowship, and uh, just happy to have you with us this morning. God is good, isn't he? Praise God. I don't know what they're doing back there, but uh, <laughs> anyways, we thank the Lord for that. Today is a special day. It's the Christmas uh, 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 packets, and we're going to be blessing them and dedicating them to the Lord before we send them off, and Linda's going to be telling you a little bit more about that in just a few moments, uh, but uh, that's a special Sunday, and the kids are going to be doing something here in just a few moments. But before that, I do want to have a word of prayer actually for Ken uh, he's not here today. He's always here. He's got some severe pain in his hip, and uh, he's got to go see the doctor tomorrow about that. So be praying for Ken Eaton. And also, Mick uh, was sicker than a dog this morning. He called me and, and uh, got a sinus infection real sick. I told him we'd be praying uh, for him. And then we continue to pray for Rick. Uh, Rick's going in for uh, major heart surgery, I think a triple bypass. Uh, and he's already had several uh, uh, heart surgeries, and so this is a huge deal. And uh, so that's going to be next week, Monday, not this week, Monday. So we'll be having special prayer for him next week, uh, but we want to hold him up in prayer. I hope you all will be praying for him throughout the week. I know it's Thanksgiving week and everything else that's going on, uh, but always remember those that are going through six and very challenging things in life, and that's just the way trust my message this morning will minister to all of us when we deal with that. But uh, we want to have special prayer this morning to open up the service, and uh, then later on we'll be blessing the Christmas packets, and uh, that'll be exciting. Amen. George Stewart's sick. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, he was not feeling well yesterday. Yeah, that's right. He's working here, and he sounded rough. Let's hold up George in, in prayer, too. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you that we can come to you and that you're a great and wonderful God. And you hear us even before we ask. But you said to ask, Lord, to ask. And we are asking this morning in the name of Jesus Christ that, Lord, you administer to the needs of this body of believers. And God, I bring these that are sick, especially Ken and Mick and George to you, Lord, that are facing uh, these illnesses. God, whatever it is, I pray that it would be resolved and bring healing, uh, Lord, to their bodies and touch them right now. Even Ken, take away that pain, that severe pain in his hip, Lord. And we pray that uh, whatever it is would go away right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray for Mick, heal his body, God, from this affection that's attacked him. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. And we bring George to you, all that he's going through, Lord, right now. I pray that you would strengthen his body. You know, he's been battling this cancer for so many years and the weaknesses that he goes through, Lord, never complains, never complains, Lord. I just pray that you would touch him and heal George this morning for the glory of God. And then we lift up Rick to you, God, as he's facing this heart surgery that God, the angels of heaven would encamp around about him all this week and that the peace of God would rule and reign in his heart. Even as he's facing this, Lord, he would have a confidence that you are in control. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. And bless this service, God. And Lord, bless all that have been a part of this uh, Operation Christmas Child. And Lord, let this be a special day of thanksgiving to you for all your blessings to us. And we'll thank you for it, for we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. I want to announce, though, we have a Sunday night service tonight at 6 o'clock. 
And so uh, we'll be doing it without the screen, most likely, because of, of we can't have certain people here because they had other appointments. But we're going to sing out of the hymn book and sing courses that we know. We'll get it all together. Les is going to be helping with my wife on the piano. And we're just going to have an old time sing and a time of worshiping the Lord. And then I'm going to preach a message on the, on the power of Jesus' name. And uh, I believe it's going to be a good service. So we'd like to invite anyone who wants to come uh, tonight to be a part of that. And then there'll be no Wednesday night service. None. It's Thanksgiving weekend and everybody's busy. And uh, so please, we never have a Wednesday night service because of that. And so it'll be next Wednesday and we'll be announcing that. So God bless you. And uh, let's have a wonderful, wonderful celebration here this morning as they sing joy to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone stand. Praise the Lord. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While the breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Darkness, I'll dance in the shadows, I'll see the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. Oh, you shine with glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. my strength and who said it <clears throat> huh anyone um, 
No. <laughs> a long dissertation <laughs> for a wrong answer. <laughs> Leave it to Matthew. I think he's prejudiced. No. Nehemiah, and he said it, I think chapter 8, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Or it might be chapter 13, verse 8, I'm not sure. But it's in Nehemiah, I know that. And he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And that's why he was building the walls of Jerusalem, and he did it in 52 days. A miracle from God. And he said, my strength is in the Lord and the joy that I have in him. Isn't that wonderful? And that's what this moment is here for us too. The joy of the Lord. And uh, we, have, we have over 50 boxes and he did it in 52 days. We got over 50 some boxes and we have several more that still are coming in uh, that I have to go get after church. But uh, Linda's going to take charge from here on in. How many? 70s. Awesome. 70. Now, considering the fact Plus that we got... Others. Wow. Praise, let's okay. give the Lord a hand clap. Boy, that's great. Considering the fact that we didn't get started until September, then we had two weeks we weren't even here. This is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I am excited about this. That's 73 boxes that go to 73 children who have families that will hear about the blood of Jesus Christ. Is that not awesome? Now, the kids were awesome about bringing... I use that word awesome a lot, don't I? Uh, we have certificates of participation. Every family that participated in making a shoebox or two or three or four or five or six, would, we would like you to have a certificate as a thank you. Uh, you, have, you can put your, name, your family's name on it. And what we want you to do now is we want everybody that will to come and pray over these boxes. I presume that when you made the boxes, you prayed over them. Because God had to direct you on which child these were going to. They didn't, you didn't see their face, but God directed you. I'm praying. And uh, we pray over them on our homes, and we pray over them at church. They pray over them at the collection center. They pray over them multitude of times at the processing center. So we want these gifts to go to kids that's never had. We've got kids that's had and had and had. I've got nieces in my family that you can't even figure out what to buy them because they have everything. These kids have nothing. I've never been there to Africa like Pastor has, but I know they've had, these kids have nothing. Mm -hmm. So everybody that will, come up, and uh, we're going to gather around the boxes, lay hands on them, and pray for them. And as families, take one of these certificates, and we are so thankful for you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on Let's up. Let's come. Praise the Lord. All those that have participated, come on up, and let's gather around. Everybody in the church can come, too. Everybody come. Let's just come and uh, lay hands on these boxes. And uh, let's just believe the Lord to bless hearts. Uh, we enjoyed the videos that Scott uh, put up there for us all these, this last month and a half. And uh, sometimes it was hard to get up and talk afterwards. When you see the blessing of these boxes that go into the lives of so many, um, so many of these kids, it's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, lay hands on those boxes right now. Everybody lay hands on them. And uh, I'm going to lift up one before the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody gather around. Lay your hands on them. Come on, Logan and Kelly. Be a part of this. Come on up here. And uh, we'd love to have you be a part. Those little kids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't feel isolated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the ministry of Samaritan Purse that has touched lives around this world during hurricanes and uh, during tornadoes and, Lord, in times of crises and uh, uh, tsunamis and uh, where their ministry has gone these many, many years. And, Lord, this Operation Christmas Child God, that they started so many years ago that has touched literally millions and millions and millions of church children, Lord, around the world. God, we pray that this year would be the biggest year, the greatest year. And Lord, they would reach more children this year than ever before. And as they open these boxes and receive the gospel message and are touched with the love of God and these gifts, God, remind them of the gift of Jesus Christ, that unspeakable gift, that, Lord, you administer to every child, every life, 
that you would change lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And those that have had little hope or no hope and those that have had little love or no love, God, those that have just been struggling through life would receive these packets, God, that it would touch their hearts and they would know that God loves them. And that, Lord, we would see joy, the joy of the Lord spread throughout the world through these boxes. And we'll praise you for it. We dedicate them to you now, Lord. Anoint them with your presence. Anoint them with your joy. Anoint them with your love. Lord, anoint them with your power to change lives. And God, may the results be seen in heaven. And we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap a praise. Praise God. God is so, so good. We're going to leave them right there throughout the service and uh, be praying for them up until Christmas that God would use them to touch lives for the glory of the Lord. Praise God.
snow the sun forbear to shine but thou who called me here below will be forever mine will be
where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity there will be a day coming hallelujah and I hope you're all ready for that day because uh, some people are planning to go through death but I'm planning to go through the rapture and uh, I live in the expectation that at any moment at any time Jesus Christ could return hallelujah in the heavens and in a moment Paul said in the twinkling of an eye will be caught up to be with the Lord in heaven. That is the hope that the saints of God have, and what, what a hope to have 
on this Thanksgiving weekend and uh, uh, certainly exciting to uh, be able to live with that expectation every day of our lives. Praise the Lord. We've been doing a series on uh, the little letters from the Lord, and we talked about Obadiah and Philemon, and we talked about uh, uh, 2 John and 3 John, and uh, we're supposed to be talking today about Jude, but because it's Thanksgiving weekend, uh, I'm going to be preaching a message on Thanksgiving, because uh, I just felt led to do that. I have a sermon prepared, and I'll preach that next week on the book of Jude, fighting for our faith. And that's what the book of Jude is all about. And uh, these are the five books of the Bible that are just one chapter. And that's why I call them little letters. And I've enjoyed preparing my messages and, and uh, meditating on them. And I was tossing in my heart which way to go. And I got a piece uh, uh, several days ago about just uh, preaching a Thanksgiving message. And uh, then I had to come up with one. And I've been working on that all week trying to get something that just uh, gels with my heart. And uh, I like to preach what I feel. Amen. And there's so many things that could be said and so different ways to say it. And after being here 26 years, I've said a lot of things about Thanksgiving. And I don't know if I got anything new today, but I'm going to share up my heart to you. And if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verses 4 through 8. And I got a phone call coming in. Uh, and it's, it's, pan, it's a spam. It's from spam. I, I got to take this one. It's important. Spam. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put them on airplane mode right now, real quick. If I can get into my phone. In fact, I feel like throwing my phone through that door right now. Uh, I can't even get into it. But uh, if you'll just be patient with me, there it is. We're covered now. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take my coat off. I can see right now uh, it's going to be one of those Sunday mornings. Praise the Lord. Four days. Thanksgiving. How many look forward to Thanksgiving? It's one of my favorite holidays. We're going to have most of the kids will be with us. Some are going to be away uh, at their other relatives for, uh, uh, for the Thanksgiving. Then they're going to be with us for Christmas. They've got to choose between the two. And, and we're, just, we're just grateful to have a few of our kids there. We're going to have most of them uh, this Thanksgiving. And uh, we're excited. We're excited about that. And and uh, uh, everybody usually likes Thanksgiving for various reasons. Some it's food, and some it's football. And uh, others, uh, I used to get all excited about football. I hardly even pay any attention to it anymore. Uh, but uh, I do love the pumpkin pie and the food and the turkey and the cranberry sauce. Uh, I was a kid growing up, I hated cranberry sauce. Now, as a grown-up, finally, I began to realize this stuff is delicious. And uh, I love the cranberry sauce. I never could understand why you always can just eat it at Thanksgiving. Then the whole rest of the year, you never see it. I told my wife, make some cranberry sauce, man. This is why we ought to eat this like every month. You know, have some cranberry sauce and even turkey. But uh, it's a special treat at Thanksgiving time. And uh, wait, I, I read a story about a young, a young family uh, that... Uh, uh, they, every week, they, every year, they would go to grandma's house to have their Thanksgiving. But the young mother, she said, this Thanksgiving, I want to do it at my house. But I've never done a turkey before, and I'm intimidated, but I really want to do it. And so she got everything ready, had that turkey, been working on it for days, getting things ready. And then they're all there, everybody sitting around the table, grandma too, they're all sitting there. And then she came out and she said, uh, now... I'm not, don't expect this to be as good as grandma's or anything, and I did the best I could with this, uh, but if, if it's not, if it doesn't satisfy everybody or you're scared to eat it, we can all just go out to eat. And so she went in to start bringing the food out, and when she came out, her husband and her son were sitting there with their coats on. <laughs> what an insult, man. <laughs> Didn't even give her a chance, but I love Thanksgiving. And uh, I remember the first time my wife and I had Thanksgiving. My wife, had, my mother used to, her mother used to say, honey, you learn the piano and I'll do the cooking, but you learn the piano. So my, I became the guinea pig when I got married to my wife. And the first meal she cooked for me, she started crying because she burnt 
she burnt the bread, well, the bread, she put it in a, a, war, a bread warmer and it splashed water up on her and so the bread was all squashy and the, the peas, she boiled them so long, Susie, it boiled them right out of their, right out of their shell and uh, the meat was so hard, we sat down to eat and Sister Cobra wasn't there, she was ill, that's why my wife had to cook and she wasn't my wife that time, it was just my girlfriend and we sat down to eat the meat and she gave me the best piece so I was able to cut it. But Brother Cobra's there and he's trying to cut this meat, you know, and he couldn't ca- cut it and the dog come up barking and said, barking and, and wanted a piece of the meat. And my father all looked at him, he says, you don't know what you're asking for. <laughs> We about died laughing because my wife, uh, she didn't care for the, too much for the joke. But uh, we got through that meal. That was many, 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 many moons ago. That was about, uh, oh my, 50, over 50 years ago, 51 years ago that that story uh, was told. But uh, uh, I love Thanksgiving. Uh, but it seems like today so many people are so full of grumbling and uh, just uh, can't seem to see anything in life to be thankful for, and uh, they just love to complain and grumble ab- about everything that's going on in their life. It's, they never can smile. Every day is a, a terrible day for them. Have you ever been around people like that? It's like, cannot see nothing good. I got two phone calls this morning. Got one from Ken Eaton, and he said, Brother Roy, I'm not going to be there today. He said, I got pain going all around the side of me. And he says, and it's just killing me. He says, I can hardly walk. I'm using a cane now. And he says, it's killing me. I just can't make it. And I said, can I understand? I know you're, you're one of the most faithful men in this church. And uh, I said, I understand, Ken. We'll be praying for you this morning. And he says, but, but, he says, I'm thankful that I can, I can talk to you this morning. I'm thankful that I got a brain to be able to think. I'm thankful that I was able to make my doctor's appointment for tomorrow. So I got a lot to be thankful for, but right now I'm in a lot of pain. I said, I said, Ken, I'm going to use you for an example in my sermon this morning. Isn't that good? And then Mick called me. He called me. He said, I, I, I don't know. So he was going to go pick up David McDade this morning. I talked to him yesterday. He was doing fine. He sounded like he got hit by a Mack truck. And went on with, he's in pain and, and sick. And I said, whatever you do, don't come to church. We don't need that, whatever you got. And he said, uh, then he started laughing right in the middle of all of it. He started laughing. I said, I'm going to use you as an example in my sermon. Because in the midst of the crisis, he was able to still laugh. And even though he sounded terrible on the phone, uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's just a good way for the saints of God to be. There's always something to be thankful for. And Paul said in the passage we're going to read today is, I thank my God always. You're going to see it in just a few moments. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, and I'll read it to you. But I want to talk about uh, an old grumpy man. I just had to tell some of these stories. They're too funny. This old grumpy man, he won the lottery ticket. Playing the lottery for years, never won a thing. He won a $20 million lottery ticket. I mean, he picked one, it was a $20. He goes into the store to get his money. He throws his ticket down. He says, I just won $20 million, and I want my money. And the guy said, well, that's not the way it works. We can only give you a million today, and then you get the rest of it over the next 20 years. He said, whoa, no, I want my money now. Get me to the manager. So the manager came out. He said, hey, I'm sorry, this is not the way it works. You only get a million today, and you've got to wait, and you get the other money year by year, and you'll get, you'll get your $20 million. He said, no, if I can't have it now, give me back my $2, and here's your ticket. Do you ever see people that stupid, that grumpy, that crazy? It's like, whoa, give me the ticket, hallelujah. Well, that's the way this world is so many times, and I think we need to have a day sometimes through the year called the grumpy day, so that people that are like that can celebrate in their own way, whatever it is, and we give them allowance to be grumpy that day, but then we only give them one day a year to be grumpy. But the bad thing about this is we only have one day a year to be thankful. But I believe as the saints of God, every day, Paul said, always, 
always I have reason to be thankful. Every day that I wake, every time that I go through life, uh, my son-in-law sent me a, he sent me a message. I don't know if I came, you get on my phone now. Uh, I got it all closed down. He sent me a message about pastors, and, and it was all uh, this third survey they did and, uh, to try and encourage me. And he says uh, that you're not alone sometimes in the struggles and battles you go through. And it said there, 90% of the pastors they interviewed said that they felt that their ministry had a negative effect on their children and their family. 90% said it had a negative effect upon their marriage. 90%, 90%, 75% said that, that they, they feel stressed out and they hate what they're doing. Only, only 5% stayed in the ministry longer than five years. I, I mean, it was like, I couldn't believe the statistics, and I read it to my wife. She says, oh, I already read it. Uh, I, it took me a couple of days to see it on my messages. And, uh, I, and my wife said, oh, I've already seen that. Jeff sent that to you. And uh, I said, he's trying to encourage me. And uh, I thought, boy, we, we have loved the ministry. Have there been difficult times? Have there been struggles and battles? Yes. But well, to say uh, I am blessed to have a church like this, people like you, one thing I'm thankful for is God's people. And you're going to see that that was the first thing that Paul was thankful for, God's people. And gratitude is a mark of godliness. And uh, uh, one person said this, when we consider all God's gifts and all that we possess, a grumbling mood of discontent gives way to thankfulness. Amen? And about the time I'm having a bad day, I start thinking of all the memories and all the good things that God has blessed me with in my life. And like Ken Eaton, I can say even in the midst of my pain, but I am thankful that I have this, 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 four kids serving the Lord, uh, 14 grandkids love Jesus. I, I have a family that gather around on Thanksgiving. We think, great is thy faithfulness, and read and worship the Lord and thank him for his goodness to us. That's a whole family. I thank God for his healing touch, his power, his blessing upon my life, and so many other wonderful things. And it's so important to be thankful. In fact, thankful and thankfulness and thanksgiving is mentioned over 137 times in the Bible. You don't think that's important to God? That his people have thankfulness thankful hearts. Amen. Bible says, that, and Paul said this, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me and everyone and everything. And Paul said, uh, I thank my God always. Turn in your Bibles there to 1 Corinthians. I gave you a lot of time to get there this morning. My message is going to be short too. Give me a hand clap. Yeah. That was by faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> starting with, uh, in chapter 1, starting with verse 4, he says this, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who shall also confirm you unto the end, uh, that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this brief paragraph, Paul highlights three blessings for which the Christian should always Everyone say, always. always. Be thankful. Amen. And if you can't be thankful about anything else, be thankful about this. I had probably 150 things that I could have preached on that needed to be, we need to be thankful for scattered throughout the Word of God. So many verses about it. Uh, to be thankful, to be thankful, to be thankful for so many things. But I'm choosing just these three things that Paul mentioned that he was so, so thankful for. And in fact, time after time, through all of Paul's epistles, he gave thanks for the churches and the individuals that were following the Lord, some that he had led to the Lord, some that others had led to the Lord. But when he visited the churches or when he wrote letters to them, he always gave thanks for the people of God. Amen. And if there's one thing we need to be thankful for, 
It's the family of God, the God's people. And I love that. He says, I thank my God always on your behalf. Paul was thankful for God's people. Amen. And I believe we need to be thankful. We need to go around and thank everybody for being here this morning and appreciating them. And, and uh, I get a thrill out of that. And you know, it gets discouraging when I know there are certain people that should be sitting in certain places and they're not here. And I don't know why they're not here. And for various reasons, sometimes I know, sometimes I don't know. And, and, uh, but I love it when all of a sudden someone's filling the pews that I wasn't expecting to be here. And I said, whoa, hallelujah. That makes me just get so excited. And uh, uh, you, you got to be in my shoes to appreciate all of this and it'd be terrible to sit and just preach to yourself I had to do that a couple weeks uh, last month because of of the COVID and I stood here and preached to myself and Scott and Sheila and uh, Jerry came one time he didn't come the second time I guess I scared him off and uh, uh, Les came in though Les came in handed him his check he says I'm getting out of here before you start preaching so he left and I thought boy oh boy that's not very good and, uh, uh, but uh, I hate it when I have to preach to just a handful of people. It just makes it so much better when it's filled up around here. And we could use a few more this morning, but I thank God for the ones that are here. And I thank God always on your behalf for being here. And uh, um, I, I've said this so many times, but every one of us need to belong. Amen? Amen. Or feel belonged. Every one of us, we need to experience that and, and, uh, and to have that togetherness. And we were so blessed this week. We, we, it was a great time. We had 12 here yesterday helping us put up the living nativity out there and uh, getting on the, 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 all the, uh, the uh, stable and the manger and all that and everybody coming and, and uh, had 12 men here helping me like crazy and working. Some stayed with me like less until four o'clock. Uh, I, I about wore him out and <laughs> I knew he was wanting to go home and get something to eat, uh, but I gave him donuts at nine o'clock. You think he'd have been happy and there was some more donuts still in there. The kids finished them off. And I said, Les, there's some more donuts. And he just looked at me like, you've got to be out of your mind. And uh, I was standing on a 12-foot ladder. He was down there. I'm thinking, he's wanting to go home. And I need somebody to hold this ladder and protect me from falling and trying to get the star. I got all that up there. And then the star wouldn't light. I couldn't believe it. And uh, first time ever, ever, that I put the star out up without testing to make sure it worked. Because I was confident it would work. Get it all up. Les is down there, and he says, we're testing all the strands and everything, and they're working. That one's working. We had five strands coming down. They're all working. He said, they're working. He said, Brother Roy, what about the star? I looked up. I said, oh, wait a minute. No, no. So I climbed up the ladder, made sure it was plugged in, checked all the switches, everything. I thought, oh, no. It's got to tear it all down. I didn't do it yesterday, thank God, or Les probably would have thrown his hammer at me. But uh, I love getting together with God's people, amen, to work, to play, to do things. After that, we had to go to a, uh, we had, were invited to go to the worship, uh, uh, the worship team had a big get together at, at Christina's house and Cody's. And I've been to the house many times, but never in their house. I've been there, picked up things, never went in the house, got to go in their home, and they had this big spread. We had the best meal you could imagine, and then we all these desserts that uh, that uh, 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 Sister Halcom had made, and along with whoever else was involved in that, and boy, I just ate until I, I couldn't believe it. But that's not the part I enjoyed the most. What I is just talking to everybody, sitting and laughing and talking, and just kept looking. I said, "Boy, your house is so beautiful. It's so nice, so big, so spacious." So, and uh, I just we just. My wife and I left, and when we left there, we was walking hand in hand over to the, uh, the van, church van. I'll tell you why we're driving the church van in a few moments. And we got over there, and uh, uh, on the way out, and I said, wasn't that refreshing just to relax after a long day and just in fellowship and laugh and talk and share with the family of God? I don't know of anything that makes me more thankful than God's people. Amen. We're blessed, amen, and to belong to something like this. And not only here, around the world, my wife and I are in, in contact and 
to so many fellowships, so many families uh, that have touched our lives are like brothers and sisters to us across this country from Africa, Philippines, uh, uh, you name it, in Trinidad. We got a call <coughs> working on my car uh, a few w- months ago. We got a call from Trinidad and, and it was uh, Karen Tilkaran that called us and uh, worked with us in Africa. And we hadn't heard from her in probably 15 years. And all of a sudden we get this call out of nowhere from Karen and, and her, her brother got killed over in Sierra Leone uh, in a tragic car accident. We buried Troy and his grave is over there. And Karen called and she was there and her and her brother were with her, working with us in Trinidad. Trinidad when all of this happened. And I flew down to Trinidad to be with her mom and dad and to do the funeral service uh, uh, just in memory of, of Troy. And uh, it was one of the saddest, saddest moments in my life. And yet at the most, most honorable time I ever had in my life to have that dad and mom in the, as they showed the video of his death and the burial there in, in Sierra Leone. That's the first time I had seen it because there was no power in Trinidad to watch it until just before the funeral, they got electricity and we see able to show the video that Karen had brought from Sierra Leone and we watched the video and I broke down I started crying I couldn't handle it I'd been home I wasn't there when he got killed and we was getting ready to go back to Africa when all this happened I was in down in Arkansas when we got the call about nine o'clock at night from our mission director so Troy got killed I mean my whole family was like our son he lived with us for four months when he first came to Sierra Leone, like my own son. And we just couldn't believe it as we got the details and everything. I got killed in a car accident, hit by the vice president's motorcade, just killed him. And uh, so sad, died in the arms of our other missionary, Mike. A very, very sad day in our mission. And uh, we was watching the video of the funeral and everything, and uh, it was just a tearbreaker. And I broke down and started crying, and I had to leave the room. I was supposed to preach. I had to leave the room and I went back in my bedroom and just started, I cried uncontrollably. And the mom and dad, I was feeling so bad. I couldn't stop it though. I just could not. And the mom and dad came back there and put their arms around me and comforted me. It was the most precious moment in my life. And his dad hugged me so tight and he said, Now, I can handle my son's death because I know how much you loved him. Well, I've been through some tough times, but I've seen God make those tough times so precious to me and so grateful to God for those moments that I've been blessed with a thousand times over. I'm a blessed man. I'm a, to even go through these difficult times, but yet to feel that touch. And her dad, I helped him milk the cows for the next three days. We, he taught me how to milk a cow. He taught me how to, to, to he has a big dairy farm there. We milk cows. I never, I never milked a cow in my life. And I'm there trying to milk this cow, and he's laughing at me. And I'm just pulling and squeezing. I'm thinking, you do this every day of your life? He says, oh, yeah. This is what he does. He says, how in the world do you ever get a gallon? I got like a, I got like a communion glass full. <laughs> oh, but he got the biggest kick out of me. I was there for about three days, and uh, I'm telling you, it's the family of God is re- precious to us. And I found out a long time ago that we need each other. And Solomon knew that too. He says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, The one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he that hath another to help him up, he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Isn't that beautiful? Ecclesiastes 9 through 12. So beautiful, beautiful scriptures there. Uh, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And I thought, that we need each other, don't we? We really do. And we need to be grateful. We need to be thankful. And life was meant to be shared. Uh, being a member of God's eternal family gives us people with whom we can share life with. 
phone calls, little cards, missing, getting together once, twice a week and just hugging each other, talking about the things of God and, and enjoying. And throughout the week, I get phone calls. I deal with every kind of issue you can imagine in life. And I'm telling you, it floats my boat. It makes me feel that I'm needed. And also, I love making people feel that they are needed. And I like to be thankful for every everybody that had contributed to my life around this world. And this message is going around the world right now. But I want them to know, I want you to know, This guy right here has a lot to be grateful and thankful to God for, especially God's people. Amen? How many here, you're happy for God's people, are you? Hallelujah. I am. But he goes on and says, not just God's people, what about God's provision? Verses uh, 5 through 7, he says this, that in everything uh, ye are enriched by him, by God, in all utterance and in all knowledge, uh, even as the testimony of Christ Jesus was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, uh, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've blessed you, I've blessed you, I've given you everything you need in life. It's in me and my provision, and I'm telling you, everyone here, that will accept it and believe it have been made rich in the mercies and the grace of God. It's called the great grace, the great riches of His grace that He has bestowed upon us. And may God help us ever to be thankful for what we have here in the United States of America. Listen to this. If you have food in the refrigerator, clothes on your back, roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the world. Mark my word, you go to places like India, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia, the Sudan, you name it, you go there, you cannot believe. Uh, We took Sister Huff, Senator Huff's wife, uh, Ethel, she's still alive, Brother Huff passed away a few years ago, and uh, she's still down in London, Kentucky. They came over to visit us, and uh, he was a pastor, but also state senator in Kentucky for 20 some years, and, and uh, they came, and we took them down to the local hospital, uh, to walk through the local hospital, and we was only there about five minutes, and Ethel uh, Huff broke down in tears, began to shake, and began to cry. She says, I I've never seen anything like this. People laying in the halls, people, people dying, um, hospital beds with no mattresses on them, just springs and, and no, no lights, no electricity, no running water. Uh, just the stink, 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 the stink of death, the stink of urine, the stink of everything you can imagine in that place. And we took, a, of course, we're not thinking nothing of it. We live there. We go through this every day. So we're down there showing them everything. And they brought a bunch of supplies to give to the hospital. Now, they're in Sierra Leone. So we had all these boxes of supplies to give to them. And, uh, and all of a sudden, in the midst of all this, she breaks down and just starts crying. And she says, we had to take her home. We had to take her home. She went home and she just cried and cried and cried. I wish she could be here to tell you the story. Just tore her heart. And to this day, we're so close to the Huff family. And went with Vernon, to, that's that family that helped us, uh, really designed everything for us to put the radio station in over in Sierra Leone five years ago. And got to be with their son-in-law, Vernon Jarvis, who's a dear friend of mine, which I've mentioned often. But all these memories, all these memories, and it just lets me be thankful for what I have. So thankful. I wish I could take all of you there just for five minutes. Five minutes! And let them open up that box. Touch those toys. And get so happy and don't even know what to do. Go crazy over something little like that. It'll mean so much to them. I'm telling you from my heart, it's going to mean so much to them. And God bless you for what you've done to make it possible. Amen. And multiply that by millions today. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, spare change in a dish, you're among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. Listen to that. If you own your own computer, you are part of 1% of the world who has that opportunity. (laughs) According to the global rich list, even at the U.S. poverty level, you still make more money than 89% of the world. Hey, I remember when I used to fill out my taxes and I thought I was not going to get any credit because I was making $32,000 a year. 
I thought I was rich because I lived on $7,600, $7,200 a year in Africa. And then I gave back half of that. So I was living on $3,000 a year in Africa. And I thought I was blessed having all that. Then I came back and when they first started giving my salary here, I mean, I was like, whoo, I am going to be so filthy rich. I won't know what to do with this money. It didn't take me long to find out there's a place that I could spend it. And uh, I remember that we'd only been here a couple months and we'd already given away about 300 and some dollars of our, our monthly income. And I realized real quick, I can't keep doing this. This is, this is not going to, we're not going to be able to make the house payment. This is really bad. It's going to take a whole lot more money to live here to, to go to live in Africa. And I began to put it all together. And that's when I really began to worry. <laughs> How in the world are we going to make this adjustment to America? But we thought we were rich. Anything over $30,000, like, whoa, whoa, what are you going to do with all that money? And uh, we're blessed now. Blessed far beyond measure, the church this year gave us a wonderful uh, uh, $100 a month, a week, a week, $100 a week increase in our salary. $100 a week. I thought it was a month, because that's usually what I get, about $100 a month uh, for an increase in my salary. But I hadn't taken one for quite a few months, years. I told him, no, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Church is going through struggles, this and And man, they didn't ask me. They just said, this is what we're giving you, buddy. I said, well, I'm not going to turn away a gift like that. And we was remodeling our house and going through a lot of things. And what a blessing that was to us. Uh, But we've always considered ourselves rich, rich, blessed. Maybe it's because we was in Africa so long, Susie, but everything we have, we look at our house, we think we're living in a mansion. We think that our house is the greatest thing in the entire world. We go to bed at night and we turn the light switch off and we say, thank God for electricity. We turn the tap on and look for the worms and when they don't come out, we say, thank you, Jesus. No worms in our water. It's great, isn't it? Did you ever think about that? We'd pour a glass. We couldn't just open up the tap in Africa and drink the water. You'd have a bunch of worms in there. You had to put it through a filter. Yeah. When you made your, when you go get your bread down at the bread store, you'd cut it and there would be some cockroaches right in the middle of the bread. Hey, I'm not joking. You, we didn't throw it away. No, we peeled them out and we ate it. Thank God. We'd come, ants would get in the sugar bowl. Hey, we would eat the ants and the sugar together. Add some protein to it. Hallelujah. God's provision. We are so blessed in America, and we just don't take time to recognize God's gifts to us here in America. We are spoiled rotten. Rotten. We have so much. A Sunday school teacher once asked her class what they were thankful for, and a little boy said, my glasses. And she said, your glasses? She said, yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful for my glasses because when someone gets ready to punch me in the nose, they look at my glasses and they don't do it. And he says, and then when the girls come to kiss me, which is not very often, but they do, they see the glass, they can't get close enough to kiss me. He says, oh man, it's worked both sides uh, to spare my life. Just a little boy, but I thought that was comical. And uh, I just want to recognize that every rising sun to start the day and every moon that rises, and stars that shine at night remind me of the goodness and graces and riches of God. He's a great and wonderful God. He's provided for us from the morning until the end of the day and through the night. And I, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my taxes. Amen? I got, I'm thankful for my taxes because that proves I got a salary. Hallelujah. Salary enough that I got to pay taxes. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I get to pay taxes. And the thing about that is I'm turning 70 in less than a month. And for the first time in my life, I'm going to get a social security check. Hallelujah. It's coming. It's a, we've already fired. It's coming the first week in January. And I'm just praying, dear God, let me live. Just to, just to touch it. And the nice thing about that, it, within two years, 
I will have gotten back all the money from the government that I put in all these uh, 26 years I've been here because I never paid any social security tax when I was in Africa because I didn't make enough money to pay. First time I followed in Africa, they gave me $2,500 back, the government did, because I had all these kids and living in poverty. And I thought, hey, I can't steal from the government. So I stopped filing my income tax for the next 20 years. I never filed income tax because I didn't want to rob the government. Stupid me. <sighs> God help me get through this message. Be thankful for the clothes that kind of fit tight on you. You ever put on that shirt? I had one on the other day. It was kind of tight. I remember when I used to be able to wear it. I couldn't wear it. And that dude just told me I've got more than I need to eat. Amen? And that dessert last night didn't help things at all. I, I had like four desserts last night, and boy, I felt it this morning. Uh, be thankful for the lawn that needs mowing, the windows that need cleaning, the gutters that need fixing, because it means you have a home. Be thankful for your huge heating bill, because it means you have a furnace. You have some way to heat it. Be thankful for that. Amen. Be thankful uh, for all the complaining you hear uh, about the government. Be thankful because it means you've got free speech. Take advantage of it while you have it. Amen. Thank God for that. There's so many things to be thankful in the negative world that we're living in. Be thankful for the lady behind you in church who sings off key. That you, at least you have ears to be able to understand that. Most of you can. I can't understand it. You ought to see my mom, wife. She was trying to, I was going to, I'm going to, we're going to sing when we all get to heaven when I, at the end of this service. And I sit down with my wife. She's on the piano playing. And, and I kept, I've sung this a million times. When we all get to heaven, what a day. My, so my wife said, no, 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 you're off key. I said, no, I'm not. She says, yes, you are. She played it again. I said, well, honey, it's just not you're hearing. No, you're off key. When you all get to heaven, she says, oh, Royce, you're singing it off key. I said, okay. I said, forget it. We'll get Sheila and them to help me. I am not going to sing it. <laughs> the next time I sing that song, it'll be in heaven. No, no, I'm not sing. <laughs> he showered us with blessings, hasn't he? Every breath I breathe, incorporating oxygen in my body, it's a gift from God. Every time I open my eyes and see the beauty that surrounds me, it's a gift from God. Every time I hug and kiss my kids and my grandchildren, it's a gift from God. Every time I take a morsel of food, taste it, swallow it, and turn it into energy, it's a gift from God. Everything. Paul said, in, in, in everything, give thanks. He said, I, I always, I always give thanks. Why? Because he realized how good God is. And uh, you just can't out bless God. And last of all, he said, we need to be thankful for God's power. And it says in verse 8, I want to read this to you, who shall also confirm you. That word confirm in the Greek means to enable, strengthen, empower, keep you strong unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Let's be honest. Life can be difficult. Right, Rick? It can be difficult. It can be the strongest man in the world to tears. Life can come against you and break you and bruise you and put you through what you never dreamed you would ever, ever go through in life. And sometimes uh, uh, they say between Thanksgiving and Christmas, there are more heart attacks than any other time of the year because of the stress and everything that's going on. It's, it's just a hard time. And yet at the same time, it's such a blessed time. And so in the situation that we live in, I thank God I don't have to draw from my strength 
my abilities, uh, uh, all those things that I'd like to revel in that I have, I need to know and remind myself every day that all the strength I have, all the ability I have, all of the, uh, the blessings I have come from the throne of God. And it's by His power, by His grace, by His enabling spirit uh, that I'm able to live every day and face every day as God would bless me. God is my refuge and strength, the ever-present help in the time of trial. Uh, uh, trouble, the psalmist said. And I believe that with all my heart. Every day I lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. He neither slumbers, he neither sleeps. Uh, he is always there to take me through every situation in life. Uh, and my suggestion to you is, is be thankful you have an endless source of strength if you'll draw from it. And I appreciate Rick realizing that. Being here last week, this week, and saying, hey, I'm going to, going to be there. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. Why? He realizes he needs God. He's facing life and death, and I'm telling you, he is a wise, wise man to be sitting there. I've known fools, fools that have gone through life situations without God and not made it, not made it. And I'm telling you, I don't want to be amongst that people. I always... Always, always want to be thankful for God's power, and I want to draw from it every day of my life. And uh, I don't care how God does it. <laughs> Sometimes He works a miracle. Amen? He heals me. And sometimes you just got to go through a, a difficult time, and it's just hard to understand how God does it. My wife and I have been going through two, two and a half months of absolute torment with our insurance company. I don't want to go into all the details, but I'm about to a place where I'm going to have to sue them to get my insurance reinstated because they uh, sent back the $755 I gave them back in April into my account two months later and uh, never notified me, never got a letter of, uh, of, of cancel cancellation, and it was their fault, and they've admitted it's their fault, but for two and a half months now, they've not been able to reinstate our insurance. And in the midst of all of this, my wife had an accident, and we are going through the battle of our life. I told her, I said, man, I told this lady Friday, oh, maybe this Thursday, three and a half hours on the phone. Three and a half hours. And I said, I said ma'am, I am not getting off this phone until I talk to a supervisor. I said, I'm a very patient man. I'm a pastor. And you have been very gracious to me. And I says, and actually, to tell you the truth, everyone I've talked to has been gracious to me. And you've all had a good spirit, a good attitude about it. You've all admitted that you're wrong and that you need to get this thing fixed. How long does it take you to get it fixed, though? I said, I can't understand this. And I said, I don't know what to do. I've never sued anybody in my life, ever. I said, I don't even know what to do. I said, but you're forcing my hand. She said, well, don't do that. I'll get you to a supervisor. It's the last thing I do. And it was the last thing she did three and a half hours later. She finally got me through to a supervisor. Three and a, I said, I'm not hanging up the phone until you get me through to one. And she had him, and I could hear her typing, and he was typing her back and typing and saying, he'll contact me tomorrow. And she said, no, he says today. And he, she, typed, she says, I'm fighting for you, I'm fighting for you. And she's just typing away, and she kept, he'll come back, and she say, I'm fighting. I says, I can hear you. I appreciate that. And man, she just kept going to town. And all of a sudden, she says, he's going to talk to you. She says, I'm going to connect you right now. And then she got back. She says, I can't connect you. It won't go through. i got to hang up, and then he'll call you. And I said, oh, no, don't hang up. Please don't hang up. Oh, God, don't, don't hang up, please. And she hung up. <laughs> and the phone rang. Like two minutes later, his name was Shane. I said, Shane, how are you doing? So I'm a supervisor. I'm so glad. I've been waiting two and a half months to talk to a supervisor. I was about ready to fly to Boston so I could talk to somebody over there. But then my next call was in from Ohio, and the next one was in Pennsylvania, and the other one was in Florida. So I didn't know really where to fly to. <laughs> and there's no one around here I could talk to. They don't want to talk to me because I didn't get my policy from them. I said, I'm, I'm desperate. So he said, fax me all your, so Monday, pray for these documents that we're fly, passing on to them and the, the crisis, and this is resolved. 
Will you pray for Brother and Sister Roy? I say this is a crisis, but you know what? In life and in death, this is nothing. Nothing. And I thank God I had an insurance insurance at one time. And even though we're in an accident right now and we don't know what's going to happen, this is just a little fender bender, but we don't know where this is going. And so we're just hoping and praying God will get us through this. But I just tell you that to let you know we all go through it. Everybody. It's life. But in everything, give thanks. Paul said, I will give thanks always, always for God's people, for God's provision, and for God's power. And uh, I'm going to do that to the day I die or until the day Jesus Christ comes. And I'm going to rejoice in him. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. And I again say unto you, rejoice. Let your moderation, your generosity be known to all men, Paul said. He says, and let the peace of God that rules your heart keep you. Hallelujah. Keep you. Amen. May that peace keep you through prayer and thanksgiving with supplication. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. It goes on and says, think on these things then, that which is true, that is, which is pure, and honest and just and lovely. He says, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. How many of you have something that you can thank God for this morning? Hallelujah. Well, I thank God one day, one day, what I thank God for the most is one day, Sister Penny, no more heart disease, no more struggles in life. You're going to be in the presence of the Lord in health and beauty for the glory of God. One day, one day it's all going to happen when we all get to heaven. Honey, if you could come get on the piano, I need Sheila here to help me, praise the Lord. And whoever wants to come and help me, hallelujah. Anybody and everybody in this church can sing better than me. But uh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. And the most important thing in life is to know that you're ready for that day. Because it could happen through an accident. It could happen through a heart attack. It could happen through a stroke. Could happen at any moment. It could be COVID. Could be cancer. Could be fast. Could be slow. I don't know when it's going to happen. For me, I feel great right now. But I had a good buddy of mine. He was 44, and he felt great. Told his wife, he's pastor over here in Catoosa, Oklahoma. Great man of God. We'll sit down. His wife brought him in some coffee. He's sitting there reading his Bible. She came back about 20 minutes later to see if he wanted some more coffee, and he was dead. 44. Another good friend of mine, Brother Holmes, up preaching, up preaching, right there in New Show, Missouri, up preaching the Word of God, heart attack. My son, my daughter, they all watched him drop over dead on the platform. Dear friends with their kids, his wife to this day, don't know. But one thing I know, he was ready. Great missionary to Nigeria. Great man of God. Great teacher. Great preacher. Fabulous. He was ready. Brother Brown, ready. <laughs> Steve Burgess, my missionary friend, worked with us in Sierra Leone for three years. Actually flew home with my wife and the kids. I had to stay for another month in Sierra Leone when the Civil War broke out to try and hand over things. It was bad, a bloodbath. Steve came home. We hooked him up with his wife, Tanya. They got married. We got to go and be a part of that ceremony over in uh, Indiana. Boy, we were so happy. We married them. They had two little kids. And, and before the second child was born, Steve was preparing for Sunday school. On, and, and he's sitting on his couch, 
and his Sunday school book open and his Bible open. He was there reading. Tanya went to bed. She woke up about 3 o'clock in the morning, came out to see how he was doing. And uh, it was real quiet, so she went to wake him up. And when she touched him, he fell over, dead. Dead. Aneurysm to the brain. Killed him. Those were just a few. Just a few. To let me know, I better be ready. And there's only one way to be ready. Not by being a pastor. That's not going to be anybody to heaven. Not being by a good old Joe. That's not going to get anybody to heaven. There will be more good old Joes in hell than anyone else. They thought they would merit it by their Samaritan acts of good to everybody. Nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't merit you heaven. There's only one thing that merits you heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for your sin. And if he hadn't died there and rose again from the dead, none of us in this room would have any hope at all. But because of him, hallelujah, because of him, he needs to be praised. He needs to be thanked for what he did for us in Calvary because through his death and resurrection, every one of us have hope that we'll trust and believe in him. If you're here this morning, you never ask him to come into your heart and life. Don't be so stupid to face tomorrow without him. The Bible calls you a fool. A fool. To gamble eternity on a simple decision. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need you. Because Muhammad can't do it. And Confucius can't do it. And Pastor Roy can't do it. And Bethel can't do it. And all the good that you can do in the world can't do it. You could fill up a billion of these Christmas boxes and send them around the world and that would save you. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, the greatest gift you can give to God this morning is your soul, your heart. Here it is, Lord, I give it to you. And then begin to live for him. And not only that, that'll be the greatest gift you ever gave to him, but then you begin to enjoy, like you've never enjoyed before, the gifts of God, his people, his presence, his power. It's unbelievable. I'm telling you, I've been in this way for 52 years. I, 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 I was a going to be an alcoholic. I was on my way to hell when my uncle got me off that floor and begged me to go to church with him. Here I am today enjoying it because I made one little simple decision, Bill. I said, Lord Jesus, I am messed up. I need help. In that moment, that moment, my life changed. Rick has never been the same. 52, never, you asked what my wife, I was telling Kelly and them, there's doing the 101 with me a Wednesday night, and I told them the story, and that's the story, that's the story, and you asked my wife, she was right there, she got to see her husband get saved, isn't that wonderful, and she can vouch for everything I say, because she watched me cry, she, uh, she watched me give my life to Jesus, she lost, watched my life change. She's the one who invited me to go to the first youth activity. They were having a, a Christmas, I mean, a new a, a Easter a morning breakfast, and she asked me to go to the restaurant with her. I thought, huh, the pastor's daughter talked to me. She, she talked to me. Honest, I was thinking that way. I thought I was the dirtiest, lowest human being on the face of the earth where I'd come from, and here's the pastor's daughter asking me to go with her, with the youth, to this, I mean, I was almost like he asked me to marry her. I was ready. I was ready right there to say, I'll marry you. Yep, let's go. I've been watching her for four, five, three months. I've been watching her. Thinking, man, if I could get her, she can play the piano. She can sing. She can, ha. Huh. She prays. She's the most godly girl in this church. And I said, boy, God, if I could get her. That's what's going through my mind. And she's over there saying, Lord, he'll do for me. But I didn't know that she was thinking that. And she didn't know I was thinking this. And we were both praying. And God brought us together. And we started going together. We've been going together ever since. Every night when I put my arms around her, 
except when she's mad. That's only a couple times a year. Then she sleeps in one room and I sleep in another room. Usually about midnight, I'll go in there and I'll go and say, honey, I'm sorry, I can't sleep. And she'll be there in bed going. (laughs) I'm not exaggerating. (laughs) Sound asleep. I'm thinking, she's not a bit worried about me. (laughs) I'm blessed. This thanks to you. I'm so blessed. I have a most wonderful wife, wonderful children, wonderful family, wonderful church. I am so blessed. If you don't know him this morning, accept him as your Savior. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Both my brothers are alcoholics or only a total alcoholic. I've never seen him sober. My other brother drinks quite a lot. I won't call him an alcoholic because God is working in his life. I keep praying for him. His son just got saved and is going to church with his wife and I'm so happy. And my brother's going with him once in a while. I keep praying for Mark because he really knows the way. But I look at them and I think, God, that should be me, but for the grace of God. I'm here by his grace and love. If you don't know him, it's so simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. And I accept you as my Savior. Forgive me, cleanse me, change me, and help me, Lord, to follow you the rest of my life. And if you'll pray that simple prayer, I know it works because it did for me. Your life will be changed. Dear Lord Jesus, I give everyone here that opportunity that has not made that decision. And if they're here this morning, may they pray that simple prayer in their own words, Lord, and ask you to come into their heart and life. And God, begin to lead them in the paths you would choose for them. And Lord, I know that they will be ever, ever so thankful to you for what you will do for them. I give them to you now. I give my church to you. Lord, may we all rejoice in you, Lord Jesus, this day and be thankful for God's people, for God's presence, and for God's power. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's all stay. Let's, Let's sing this song with them.
day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Letting God know that you need Him in your life. Thank you all for being with us this morning. Anybody wants to talk to me after service, you made a decision, you have questions or anything, I am always available. Amen? And uh, especially when it comes to things like that. So if you want to talk to anybody who has a, on, something on their heart they want to share with me, I'm, I'll stop for doing and I'll come and it's more important to me than anything else in the world. Hallelujah. God bless you and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We have service tonight if you want to come, 6 o'clock. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all.